43 points is your total, the highest in the XFL this season. We'll get into that a little bit more through the broadcast. The opening kickoff, both teams at the 30 and 35. They cannot leave until the ball is caught by Dejon Lee. Lee takes it out to the 20. We're going to check in with A.J. Smith, his initial play call. This should be a tribute and a friendly jab. 260. Brandon Silver is the quarterback, and there is the shovel pass to Max Borgie. Borgie to the 30, sidestepping, and a nice game to start it off. Now the tribute, right, go. that go. goes out Hex to Mouse Hex Davis, Hex the godfather Hex of the run and shoot. The friendly Red. jab was to June Jones, Hex. who Hex. removed that play call from the run Red. and shoot Red. playbook. Gotta love the gamemanship between two close friends. Silvers to throw. And a heads up defensive play by Bryce Thompson. Alright, give me this, give me this. Give me a lineup trio right, trio right, and stack it. Why shift red hellfire? Red check hellfire. Hey, red check hellfire. I want ready. Watch him. Run it 10 seconds, shift him. Go! Silvers. Staying up, but eventually brought down, and it's the Seattle pass rush getting home. Austin Fowlu, the standout from Oregon with the sack. So you hear that purple call, it's going to be a hard count. You get to the line early, you can hear the hard count, and then A.J. Smith will give the offense the call. Third and 15, free play for Silvers, taking a shot, sideline. Flag and down, incomplete flag for Deontay down. Burnett. Give me a free left number. 51, 51. 51. Lined up in. Offside defense, number 51. Five yard penalty, repeat third down. There we go. Good shit, good shit. There's Jim Haslett, defensive minded head coach for Seattle. The Sea Dragons, the preseason favorite. Houston, the current favorite. Watch that safety right there. Go. Silvers, sideline for Jonte Kirkland. Incomplete. Lyndon Stevens running with him. So one thing you notice about each and every one of these corners for Seattle is that they all can cover. They stay so tight to their coverage, and they turn around and know when the ball's coming before it gets there. Now that is a play that Houston could challenge. You see at the bottom of the scoreboard, the red dashes, those are the challenges. You need one timeout available to call for a challenge, and it can challenge anything. Race Porter punts it away. Gunners cannot leave until the ball is punted. Kelvin McKnight, bang! Goes down hard. Oh, let's turn it up. Ben Putnam with authority. June Jones now calling right the play. Now, 860 Aloha. Go, go, go. X and Z9. Get Here good go. splits. Good split slots. Good. Here we go. 860 on two, ready. Ben DiNucci, his quarterback, former Dallas Cowboys project, started one game in place of Dak Prescott. Hot, hot. 
Donucci throwing to the leading receiver in terms of receptions and yards in the okay, XFL, Jacor Pearson. Blue Tejan, pistol, tackles right, strong left, 24 Denver. Pistol, tackles right, strong left, 24 Denver. Tackles right, strong left, 24 Denver. On two, ready, left, 20 Denver. See where that tackle's right. It's going to be an unbalanced formation. Both tackles are to the right-hand side. That Denver is an inside zone. Josh Gordon, the former All-Pro, wearing zero. He's at the top of your screen. Hot. Hot. And it looks like June Jones is buying drinks back in Arlington because that is Darius Bradwell with the first carry of the game. Trio left, 80, Z, Indy, X levels. Trio left, 80, Z, Indy, X levels. 80, 80, on two, ready. So Bradwell getting the start at running back, the leading rusher in the XFL. Morgan Ellison is available, but not starting for Seattle. Said some nagging injuries the past two weeks. Third and three. Danucci. Good mitts by Juwan Green. First down yardage. X bunch left, Tampa, eight smoke. X bunch left, Tampa, eight smoke. Here we go, Tampa on two, ready. That Tampa call for this offense, it's that power look with the H on the left side, the smoke screen look. Check go. Hot, hot. Bradwell, right side, brought down, tackle for loss. And that is Tim Ward. So no Trent Harris, but Tim Ward from Old Dominion Dime, making the stop. Mug, read one pill. Dime, double mug, read one pill. Here we go. 91 on two. Ready. I love the communication from Tim Ward. You see him doing that thing with his head. That means he's peeling him in the other end. You rush, and if the, if the running back releases, you got him. Alert the pill. The board. Danucci back to the air, gets it off as he goes down the adjustment, not made in time by Josh Gordon. And Tim Ward with the pressure. Let's go uh, spread left, stack left, 91 Indiana X cross. Here we go. 91 two, Indiana X cross, stack left. Dig, dig. Dig. Here we go, here we go. 5 0, 5 0. Set go. Hot, hot. Tim Ward taking this play off. Danucci, Woodton crossing to Josh Gordon. Incomplete. Broken up by Jordan Mosley out of Maryland. So the great thing about this play, you heard that peel call. It means we're bringing pressure. Got to play man to man. But if the running back blocks, you don't have to peel. It's a way to get not only simulated pressure, but to create real pressure. But as long as you can cover on the back end. Cameron Nizelik out of Georgia. Punted in the NFL with the Falcons to boot it away. Back deep is William Likely leading the XFL in punt return yards. Fair caught. Now Smith in Houston trying to take down his mentor and the former head coach of the Houston franchise, June Jones, and batted down by the playmaker, Jordan Evans, out of Oklahoma. All right, here we go. Give me this. Give me this. Give me low check swing. Uh, low check swing. Uh, Why shallow change? Low check swing. Hey, low wide check shallow swing. Change. Ready? Low check swing. Good. Got the dig. Go. Tell it Silvers, he has the dig. You'll hear Smith talk to his players right up until the snap, as that's complete to Cedric Bird out of Hawaii. All right, here we go, third down. Here we go, give me spread right purple again. Spread right purple, line up for Ari, for Ari, for Ari. Spread right purple. And you heard that purple last time around, the hard count. As soon as it, as soon as the jump, it's a free play. Give me, uh, give me 
Z smash and run streak on the back side. Z smash. Red, red check. Here we go. Crowd here in Seattle into it. Silvers to Borgie, and he's brought down yet again by Jordan Evans. Everyone on the back end is locked up. Look at all these man-to-man. -man. It's man-to-man. -man. Man -man. Everyone's locked up. And so you see Silvers has to go to the check down. Jordan Evans, he collisions the running back, slows him up, and then he's able to make that tackle. This is great coverage. The DBs for Seattle are ready to play. So expecting a lot of offense right out of the gate. But right now, no points. Hope you took the under to this point. That's blocked. Seattle gets a piece of it. Elijah Holder with the rejection. Holder, a Stanford man. Notice Elijah Holder, he's off the edge. He just dips and rips. This is busted coverage on the left side, a busted assignment. Elijah Holder leads, gets the left. block. Spread left. Flip 91, H lock, Hank F check. Flip 91, H lock, Hank F check. 91 on two, ready. Here we go. Set, go. Hot. Hot. Quick strike and complete to Damian Willis. He played with Brandon Silvers at Troy. Let's go trips right, 81 X9 to five. Here we go. Trips right, 81 X9 to five. 80, 81 on two, ready. Seattle coming off a slow start Hot. to their game Hot. offensively this week and against San Antonio. Taking a shot to the end zone, underthrown, and the ball is broken up by a Jane A. Harris standout from USC. A Jane A. Harris out of USC. Notice he plays it a little early, but he's in phase with the receiver, and he's able to make Trips that breakup. Right. Tampa. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Trips Trips right. Tampa. Go. Here we go. Tampa. On two, ready. Tampa, Tampa, Tampa. Let's go. Say Seattle receiving core. With Jacor Pearson leading the XFL in receptions and yards. Blake Jackson, who was second in catches. Danucci will take it himself. Right at the first down marker. And that's an element to his game. Yeah, Danucci's an elusive runner. He's yes, he's a great passer, but what he makes his hay is with his legs. Third and one. Here we go. 60 on two, ready. 60. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Set, go! No leading rusher, Morgan Ellison to this point for Seattle. Too easy, pitch and catch, Jacor Pearson. The breakout star of the XFL moves the chains. The one thing that defensive coordinator Brian Stewart worried about were some of these pick routes, these rub routes. And that's what we saw right here. Jacor Pearson lined up at three. Man to man, it got rubbed off and got the two yards. You hear that Bucks call, also that Tampa call. That's his power, right? Last time Danucci kept it. Let's see if he keeps it or if he hands it off. Houston with the number one scoring defense in the XFL, trying to bow up here inside the red zone. So a lot of talk Stay about the there. coordinators, Stay but there. Wade Phillips has been the head coach go, of the Bills, on, Broncos, and Cowboys. Jim Haslett, former coach of the year with the Saints. They're about the defense. Here we go, 880 on two, ready. Set, go! Danucci flushed, gets it off, but it's out of the reach of Damian Willis.
Here we go. 881 on two. Ready. Let's go. Let's go. Flat. Flat. So last time we saw let's this, go. we saw inside breaking routes on the right Come side. On. Danucci sees daylight. This is what they want him to do more. Step up and run. Danucci, end zone. He's in. Seattle on the board. So let's set up the extra points. We don't kick extra points in the XFL. You can go for the one point conversion from the two yard line. You got the two point from the five and the June Jones special three points from the 10. They've done this for every attempt except one. And that has no shot. Intended for Damian Willis. Eric, thank you so much. Danucci, 29 rushing yards on that drive as Lee will return just inside the goal lines. That's really a perfect kick by Seattle. And the Roughnecks will set up at the 20. So look at the scoreboard. You see the OU, that's the over, under, or the total. It's at 43 points. So that's saying it's going to be 43 combined points by these teams. If you take the over, you need 44 to collect. 43, by the way, is the highest in the XFL this season. Houston is also favored by five points. Houston has now been favored in every game this season. They've covered in every game. Silvers to throw. And he's got Justin Smith, the burner from Norfolk State. Trips right, bucks. Trips right, bucks. It's Brian Stewart, defensive coordinator for Houston, checking out the film on the tablet. Go. Uh, the shifty and elusive good. Bryson Aline. Trips right, purple. Trips right, purple. Line up quick. Ferrari, Ferrari, line up. Trips right, purple. Trips right, purple. Hey, trips right, purple. Trips right, purple. Hey, trips right, purple. Purple, ready? Purple, purple. Line it up, line it up. Is a small yet fast Houston offense. Borgie, the only running back or receiver at 200 pounds. Justin Smith, the only receiver running back at six feet. No, cat, 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 cat. Z slide, cat. Go. Travell Harris on the flat. Caught two touchdown passes last week. Was trying to get an extra block from Cedric Bird. But that didn't materialize. So here's the great thing. You see the coverage early. Brandon Silvers drops him down the field. Miss coverage for Bill Harris gets the, gets the extra yardage. Over the middle, complete to Deontay Burnett. Slipping two tackles in the extra yardage. They're not big, Sam, but they're relentless. They thrive in yards after catch. Give me trips left, brown blast. Trips left, brown blast. Hey, trips left, brown blast. Oh, we're ready. And for this offense, these blast plays, it's, 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 it's a running play, but it's really a pass play. It's a pass out wide that simulates a run. Strike to Bird, one on one. And that's what both these offenses are all about getting one on one opportunities. It's getting the ball in open space. Even if you're not running the ball, throw that quick pass and it simulates a run. Trips right, dog, Detroit dog. Trips right, Detroit dog. Let's get this one. Hey, Detroit, no one ready? Detroit. Go! 
Four straight completions to Silvers. Houston to the ground, and there he goes! Bryson Aline from Delaware State to the end zone here in Seattle. Oh, hold on now, and a backflip. But a flag is down. During the run, holding offense number 10. The 10 yard penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Spread right, red, eight. We've got balls at the 32. Okay, we're playing, we're replaying second down, so we're good. We're still short of the line of game. So we're on the 32, going to the 27. So that's a VP of officiating for the OH, XFL, OH. Dean Blandino. He's reviewing everything in the command center back in Van Nuys, California. Borgie checks into the game. And Sam, this is tough when you do a backflip okay, and then you have to bring it back. And so this Detroit play, for them it's a draw. And so Bryson Aline, he has the space he needs. And then you're going to see Lyndon Stevens, number 21 for Seattle, trying to get off yeah, the block. Yeah, I just assume that That works. little hold is what keeps that play from being a touchdown. The effort is what makes it happen. Aline hit the hole, hit the end zone, hit the backflip, and then had to bring it back at the end of one. Six nothing, Seattle. Quarters, we heard Houston OC, AJ Smith tell his coaches, we should have challenged that play. The holding call on Justin Smith. We now bring in Dean Blandino. Dean, if Houston did challenge, what would have been the outcome? Ruling on the field would have stood. We were looking at it, trying to get an ISO shot. We could see that there was actually a grab. Tough to tell how much material restriction there was, but didn't have enough evidence to overturn had Houston challenged. Dean, thank you. you. Got it. And Sam, that's been the most effective use of the challenge from coaches in the XFL. Penalties that were called or not called. That's what the XFL coaches have been doing. They've challenged plays specifically like that where they think there should have been a penalty, and oftentimes they've been successful. But you would have burned your timeout and lost your challenge for the game if you were Houston. Borgie, and it's now seven straight completions for Silver. He slips out of a neck tackle, and that's going to be close to a first down. Okay, good. And moving the chains. Okay, here we go. Give me this. Trips left, brown blast. Trips left, brown blast. Borgie was a star at Washington State, played for Mike Leach and Nick Radolovich. Okay, right. Said, if you get the wall, you oh. got it to go outside. Uh, hey. So that is air raid and run and shoot. Quick pass to Cedric Burr for a few yards. All right, give me this. Uh, give me a uh, red F win prop. Red F win prop. Here we go, here we go. A red F win. Oh, we're ready. One thing about this offense is that they love to set up plays for the future. So those blast plays, those plays where it's like this quick screen, be wary because when they go to the pass, oh, they've thrown it off a of fake. Read corner first. Uh -huh. Eight straight completions for Silvers. Check down. Aline was open. He's probably doing a backflip again if that ball is not batted down by Nico Lelos. Nico Lalo. So if you know you can't get to the quarterback, keep your eyes on him and knock it down. He's out of St. Vincent, St. Mary, the same high school that LeBron James went to, also a former basketball player. That's a block right there. Wolfpack, Wolfpack. And some of those LeBron-like hops. He got a tweet hey, from LeBron, his first NFL hey, game with the Giants. Divide press on one next. F oh, 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 no. F move, move, move. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Five on the clock. Go. All right. All right. Urgency for Silvers on third and seven. Backside pressure. Ball is out. Seattle has it. Antoine Brooks forced the fumble. Daniel Joseph pounced on it. One of the great things about the Seattle defense, they'll have little guys, corners, safeties up around the line of scrimmage and blitzing. Antoine Brooks, most, most safeties. 
most safeties when they're up around the line of scrimmage, you might just want to get a sack. But he's thinking, they've worked on this. Let me get that ball out, because not only is it a sack, it's also a fumble, and then recovered by Daniel Joseph at NC State. And what did Ron Zook tell us coming into this game? His head coach, Jim Haslett, told him, we need takeaways. That's only the second all season long. This team has been the worst in the XFL at taking the ball away. Talked to June Jones earlier, he said, man, if we can get some turnovers or offense, we're going to be more unstoppable. Danucci facing pressure from up the middle. Pearson with the catch, breaking the 50. Matt Runner's talking about his defense. 21 yards. Here we go, here we go. Hey, hey, here we go. Hey, box, box on two, ready. So these calls, this Bucks and the Tampa calls, you know they're, they're, they're power plays, they're inside runs, but they're setting up for something different. The RPO, run pass option. Hot, hot. Bradwell with the carry, positive yards, carrying the pile for five. Week five of the XFL continues Saturday night with an FX doubleheader. The 4-0 defenders and the 3-1 Battle Hawks. Then the Guardians and Vipers. One team's going to come away with their first win. Sunday night on ESPN2 and ESPN Deportes, the Renegades square off against the Brahmas at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Every game also available on ESPN+. Plus. That D.C. St. Louis game is huge for Seattle. If they can get a win tonight and D.C. wins, They'll be in second in the XFL North. Pearson eludes one tackler. An aggressive stop by Kerry Vincent. But Pearson wins that battle. T Mac. Thanks so much here with center Alex Molette. You guys were just coming down here and talking over some stuff on the iPad. What was said? Um, we just need to settle down, eliminate the mistakes, eliminate the penalties. And, you know, we do that. We're in the end zone, and the score's a little different right now. How do you combat some of the pressure they're getting on your quarterback? We just need to block it up, ID it right, and, um, you know, we get a hat on a hat. I think we'll be good. Thank you. T-Mac, thank you. Bradwell. Face mask. Close to a face mask. There was no flag. And again, this is the type of play that you can challenge in the XFL. It wasn't initially called, but you can challenge for 15 yards. Hot! Hot! Danucci. Screen to the left, Josh Gordon barely holds on. And a fine open field tackle by Jordan Mosley. Not coming, Josh. Trips right. 81, X stop, Indiana. Here we go, 81 on two, ready. Here we go, 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 here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hot, hot. Seattle three for four on third down. Josh. Danucci, Josh Gordon didn't see it, but there is a flag. You got two flags. You got two flags. Hold off. I've got illegal contact. Defense, what's your number? Zero. Zero. 23, offense, zero. Okay. There are multiple fouls on the play. Holding, offense, number 23. Illegal contact, zero. Defense, those penalties offset. Repeat, third down. So the penalties on Darius Bradwell. Yeah, he might have wanted that. Yeah, and Kerry Vincent for Houston. Here we go, here we go. Nine, one, 90 on two, ready. F check, F check. Meanwhile, Josh Gordon. Who's number two in the XFL in yards. Has one catch, but no yards to show for it. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Danucci popped! Absolutely rocked and it's picked off in the end zone. Sean Davis, another Maryland Terrapin, with the INT, but Jordan Mosley absolutely hammered Ben Danucci. This is why this defense is one of the best in the XFL in taking the ball away. They bring pressure, and when it's up in the air, they catch it. This is the only knock on the Seattle offense. That's their 10th turnover 
which now moves him past Orlando for the most in the league. Yeah, and it's the turnover margin that hurts the most, right? You, they, I get it if you turn it over, but if you're not taking it away, it makes it even worse. The Seattle Sea Dragons are, are last in the XFL in turnover margin, and this is part of the reason why, being reckless with the football. You've heard us say Maryland a lot. This Houston defense is built around players that Brian Stewart has coached in the past, and he's had two recent stints at Maryland where a lot of these guys play for him. Especially the guys on the back end. Brian Stewart says, man, all our back end guys, they were with me at Maryland, so they understand his scheme. Oh, no, Ben, Ben, Ben. This is my best look. Near handheld will be, will be the next shot. Yep, yep, I'm looking at it. So he comes in, head up. I've got him leading with the hands, head up. I don't see any forcible contact to the head neck area. It's a big hit, but it looks to be legal. Let me just take a look at this near hand help. Yeah, still got the head up. I've got nothing in the head neck area. All right, Jason, after review, we're gonna, we're gonna let the play stand. No roughing the passer. Your spot is good at the 26. So that was a Seattle challenge. Where the fuck did you come up with this stuff? You decide. Team can challenge hey, anything. Dude's fucked up too. After review, the ruling on the field stands. There is no foul. Seattle loses the timeout and their one challenge for the game. The results play as first down, Houston. So Jim Haslett's hot, he didn't get the call, but compare this to the NFL, where he has no shot to challenge something like that. In the XFL, you're allowed to challenge any play that has been called, any play in the game. You have to be specific, though. So we challenged specifically that that was a roughing the passer. Dean Blandino, VP of officiating, looked at it. No call, you lose the timeout, no more challenge. T-Mac. Davis, what did you see to come up with that interception? Uh, I seen a quarterback through a duck. So I shot it Go. down and grabbed it. <laughs> Your defense puts uh -huh. so much pressure on quarterbacks. Yeah. How does that open up you guys to make plays? Uh, the, the, the pass rush and coverage run together. So, you know, as long as we're working together, we feed off each other, we come up with plays like that. Appreciate it. Lowell? Sean Davis with three interceptions moves him into a tie for the most in the XFL. Michael Joseph for DC also has three. Go. All right. Silvers complete. That's first down yardage to Nick Hawley out of Kent State. This is what the hit sounded like on Danucci. Hot. Uh, Hot. It's a brutal Easy game, Sam. Up. Go. Uh -huh. Silvers complete to Ben Putnam. And Putnam has a first down. Played his college ball for Jay Norvell at Nevada. Here we go. Good shit. Good shit, Ben. Here we go. Hey, trip left. Lion. Dog going. Ready? Lion. That, that Lion calls that draw play again for this team. Go! Oh. Uh -huh. Draw two, Dejon Lee. And the other side is running back is tripped up by Nico Lelos. All right, good, good, good. The first four episodes of the part nine docu, nine part docuseries, Player 54, Chasing the XFL Dream, are available now on ESPN Plus. Award winning director Peter Berg brings you inside the creation of the XFL and takes an in depth look at the players and coaches living their dream of playing professional football. To get ESPN Plus, go to ESPNplus.com or download the ESPN app. Go! Hi, hi! Empty for Brandon Silvers is 12 of 16. On the line, complete to Putman. 
that's good for about nine yards. Talk about unlikely stories. Ben Putman is one of them. Was barely used at Nevada until playing in the Arizona Bowl. Had four catches for 114 yards. He was a special teams player before that. Jay Norvell, his head coach, at the trophy presentation announced he was going on scholarship during the celebration. He never heard, so he had no idea he was on scholarship. Third and one, Cole McDonald checks in a quarterback. McDonald will keep. And down to the 35-yard line, little wrinkle there. Yeah, Good job. Yeah. So one thing you see here, you see the extra offensive lineman on the right. Cole McDonald from Hawaii, he loves running the ball. When he's in the game, usually in the two-point play or the three-point play, they love to keep him on the quarterback zone read. So that's what you have to be aware of every time he gets in the game. The clock will continue to run after first downs, incompletions, out-of-bound plays, red, red, up red. until the two-minute warning when it will turn into the college-style rules. Uh, Silver's back in with plenty of time, and that's overthrown to Deontay Burnett. Uh, if, it's, if it's press, we got to get off it. All right, here we go. Give me this. Go uh, give me low, a rock check swing, H shallow chain. Rock check swing, hey, rock H check shallow swing. chain. H shallow chain. Oh, we're ready. Rock check swing. We've seen a few drop plays already. All these drop plays do is they slow down a defense. And so you may not get a lot of yards on them, but you have the defensive linemen say, man, maybe it's going to be a draw. I don't want to get up the field. The total is 43, uh -huh. the highest in the XFL this season. Six points as of now. Silvers lets it fly to Putman, and he is shut down by Thompson. We talk about that total, that over-under a lot. The thing to remember for people who are thinking about the over Okay, here we go. Give me same well, no clear. The same well with no clear. Same well. Oh, the thing to remember is that these defenses practice against similar offenses, and so they're ready okay, for what's happening. Go. Outside release, receivers. Every receiver, right. outside release. Checking it down. Borgi stays alive, stays up in a hurdle. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Seattle's bringing a ton of pressure. How do you slow down a team that brings pressure? Screens and draws. It keeps defenders not as aggressive. What do you think about the field position here for a punt? Because if you cook this into the end zone, it's coming out at the 35-yard line. You know your defense has been playing well. You know it's a little bit out of your field goal kicker's range. And so you trust your punter to be able to get it down at least within the 10-yard line, even though you're not allowed to leave until the ball's kicked. And there is a penalty flag. Cat, see if he wants to delay the moving back or not. Take back. He wants the delay game, kicking team. Five yard penalty, range fourth down. So they're looking for more yards to back up to get more room. Because if you put this out of bounds inside the 35, there's no directional punting. It's coming out on the 35. If it goes into the end zone, it's also coming out at the 35. So field position is huge in this punt. This punt can't get in the end zone, can't even be close. Seattle has already gotten a piece of one punt so far tonight. Fair catch called for. <laughs> a doozy at the 10-yard line. Ben DiNucci in Seattle, worst field position of the night from the end zone. Wow, had to get rid of that Good with job, Tim six. Ward Good breathing down his neck. The total here, Trips 43. Left. 80, Z, Indy, H levels. Trips left, 80, Z, Indy, H levels. The highest total in the XFL. We got six points with four minutes left. Both these teams can light it up in an instant. But long odds Hunt. if you took the over. Hunt. Here's Ward again with pressure. Danuzzi. Dancing on the goal line. Throws it away right at the line of scrimmage. It's going to set up a third and long. Yes. 
So Houston trips left. Fields, the Danucci is comfortable trips scrambling. Stop, they Indiana. don't think he handles pressure from the, the middle 15. very well. So what they're trying to do is they want to keep him in the pocket, but we're noticing he's been able to scramble not only to get yards, but also scramble to find receivers open downfield. Set, go. We have not seen the XFL leading rusher Morgan Ellison tonight. Danucci clean pocket with time. First down yardage into the midst of Damian Willis. The beautiful thing about this play was two plays before. We heard June Jones say, hey, nice job on a throwaway. It was a throwaway. Well, that throwaway, which is a non-interception, sets up this play right here to Jordan Willis. You stay alive, another down. 23 yards for Willis out of Troy. As nine. NFL catches for 82 yards in his career. All with the Cincinnati Bengals. The Nucci quick pass, batted down at the line of scrimmage. Well, going back to that third down play there, you know, Houston up front tried to run some games. You saw great patience by the right side catching the games. Great job giving the quarterback time. I've been really impressed with this pass pro on the edges. How comfortable does Danucci look when he's facing pressure? Man, I, I got to tell you, he is comfortable getting out in space. He, he is very confident in his legs, his ability to gain yards, but also scramble to get guys open and throw down the field. He's got a 20-yard touchdown, the lone score tonight. Empty. Nice touch. Pearson is there. Takes the hit to the 35. The mighty might that likes to go by Peasy. He ain't too small. Danucci with time, and that's Willis, who's been very active tonight. To the 20. Matchups coming up this weekend. D.C. St. Louis is so critical for Seattle. Seattle needs a win and a D.C. win to put them in a tie with St. Louis for second place in the North. The top two teams advance to the playoffs. Nothing doing there for Darius Bradwell. Devontae Beckett with the stop at the line. Go, go. Trips right up, 881 mesh, X po post H choice. 881 on two, ready. Let's 881. The toughest part about all X these draws and all these X screens is H that choice on the backside. you don't know when to go or when to slow down, and so it keeps defenses way off balance. Inside the final two minutes, college rules with clock stoppages. Wide open is Jawan Green. Green inside the 10-yard line. A standout from Albany. He was an FCS All-American in 2019 when he hauled in 17 touchdowns. We asked defensive coordinator Brian Stewart, man, what do you do with all these crossing routes? Why do they run them so much? He says, man, they run them because eventually someone's going to come open. Whether you're in man or in zone, someone's going to be free. We Dime, saw it right red there. Bile. Red bile. Dime, red bile. Let's go, let's go. Seattle let's go. doing this with no Morgan Ellison, the leading rusher in the XFL. Josh Gordon has been shut down. Only one catch. Oh, good move by Danucci. Felt it, and his receiver does the rest. Damian Willis, his first touchdown grab of the season. Three, three, three. Left half. Left half. Left half. Part of what makes Ben DiNucci so dangerous is the red zone. So we did this in week one. He scrambled not to go and run, but he scrambled to throw. We saw earlier in this game he scrambled to run. His eyes are always down the field. In the red zone, you have to do what's called a crush rush. Keep him in the pocket to keep him from being explosive. Another three-point attempt. It's been all three-pointers except one. The last conversion that Seattle had against C uh, San Antonio. Now, we heard the coaches calling and asking for which hash. You're allowed to pick which hash you start from. Three-point attempt from the 10-yard line. Pressure, Danucci floats it, looking for Green. There could be a PI if this is not cold, but it is a score. Jawan Green, how'd he do it?
Yeah, we're looking at it. I was looking at the low end zone now. I'm looking at the handheld. I'm looking at I'm looking at the high end zone. You said the cart. Yeah. No, he's got control. He's clearly in bounds and he's got left arm around it. Okay. We're clear. You're clear on the try. Good job. So Dean Blandino taking a look and the clean everything up with so many unique rules. It's the college rules when it comes to possession of the football. You need one foot, one body part down. One foot, a hand, an elbow has to be down, not two like the NFL, just one. And similar to the NFL, the ball cannot move when you land. So you have to maintain control of the football. That's what Dean Blandino was looking for. Hey, and this is the Danucci difference. When he's taking care of the football, he's a beast. That's the best thing that I heard. The best thing that I heard this entire game so far was hearing June Jones say, hey, nice play on throwing it away. I asked June Jones earlier, I said, man, what do you tell Ben DiNucci with the turnovers? He said, we don't talk about it. Why? <laughs> if we talk about it, it may happen. And it's happened for him more than any player in the XFL. DiNucci leads the league in turnovers, but when he's on like he was on that drive, tough to beat. 90 yards for the score. Dominic Emily to kick it off from the 30. Teams lined up at the 30 and 35. They cannot leave until the ball is caught. There's a catch from Lee. And Lee will take it out, but there is a flag. Down, flag down. Yeah, it's mine, 45. That spot's really good. You got it? During the return, Holding, return team number 25, 45, excuse me. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Let's check in with Eric. Ben, you have such a feel for this pass rush. You're able to move around, you're finding guys downfield. How you doing it? I'm having fun. These guys are going out there making plays. O line's doing a heck of a job. I'm in a groove right now. I wish halftime wasn't coming up, but uh, all, all the kudos to these guys, man. We're playing a heck of a half right now. Got to keep it going in the second half. There you go, man. That fire's lit, Lil. And they continue to stoke it. Danucci has probably the most versatile group of playmakers in the XFL when you consider oh. the upside of Josh Gordon uh -huh. and when they have Morgan Ellison at running back. And we haven't even talked about Blake Jackson, that really the number three receiver for this team. Now Houston, they got their three timeouts. They go to Borgie on first down. Facing their biggest deficit of the season, it's 15-0. Looks like Houston's going to be okay to take this into the half. That's a little surprising to me. Well, the way this game has gone so far, you know you're down. You know you need to find a way to get some momentum. Sometimes halftime is the best thing for you. You go in the locker room, you regroup, you look at the scoreboard, you say, hey, we're fine at 0-0. Let's go play our game. The home team always decides to kick or defer. Seattle being the home team decided they wanted the football to start off the second half. It's looking like a brilliant move here with a 15-0 lead. So on the kickoff, you need to clear the 20-yard line, keep it in front of the end zone, and if you don't, and it goes out of bounds, the opposition takes over at your own 45-yard line. About the 20 for Seattle. Here's Danucci mic'd up in the first half. MTV, welcome to my locker, ESPN edition. We in Seattle, big Thursday night game. Sea Dragons, Roughnecks. Hey, hey, there he is. There he is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm dropping straight dime. <laughs> He's good and he knows it. That's Ben DiNucci. Three NFL games. In his career with the Dallas Cowboys, FCS All-American at James Madison. Here's the Arkansas Razorback with a full head of steam, TJ Hammonds. Okay, let's go uh, trio left, trio left, 50, slow, Z-crack, 50, slow, Z-crack, red, yes, I, no, 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 no
Gold! Red Gold! Come on, back here. here. Red 19. Laredo to H on two, ready. Yeah, you 50 got surge, 50, 50 surge. surge. Laredo to H. Laredo to H. June Jones almost had the lasso <laughs> Darius <laughs> Bradwell to get him off the field. Bradwell's been with the team for only two weeks now, and short weeks after that. That's uh, Blake Jackson, second leading receiver in terms of catches of the XFL out of Mary Harden Baylor. The live line is now Seattle favored by nine and a half. Coming into the five, game, it was Houston by five. Right. The total is 35 and a half. Right now. Live line. Yes, yes, yes. 43 coming into the game, the highest all season in the XFL. Caesar Sportsbook helping us with those lines. Danucci feeling comfortable, didn't even move his foot as he was trying to find Jacor Pearson. There's a cool customer in that pocket. He's going to bring up third and nine. So, Sam, big factor though. For Seattle, doing this without the leading rusher in the league, Morgan Ellison. 91, Indiana, X cross. 91 on two, ready. Here we go. Ellison we is go. a Here physical and violent runner. 5 And the San Antonio Brahmas had some hits on him last weekend. One thing we heard from June Jones is that even in his, in his offense, everyone who runs the ball has their best years. 39, inside pressure by Ward. Danucci flushed, escapes the tackle, calls for Josh Gordon. Got Josh Gordon, but was he out of bounds? Yes. So we could have an illegal touch bounds. here. Clearly out of bounds. It's a good play. Yep. Illegal touch. Number zero. Number zero. So it's going to be, we've got a great shot on the high end zone. Number zero, number zero, number zero. He did reestablish first to touch, legally forced out of bounds, so they'll decline the penalty. It was first to touch the ball. Penalty is declined, fourth down. Jason, they can't decline it It's because he caught it. It, it. it caught it. It's a loss of down at the previous spot. Lost it down at the previous spot. Spot, still fourth down. So much access in that exchange from Dean Blandino and his crew taking a look at it to hearing the mic on Danucci calling for Josh, Josh, Josh. Nizalik punts it away. Travell Harris, fair catch, just shy of the 30 yard line. I don't know what the signal is. 36 left here. Gunner, number 36. And a flag down. And you saw Ben DiNucci going back and watching the play before, not just the picture of it like in the NFL. Number 36 for the kicking team. Left too early prior to the kick. The five-yard penalty is added to the end of the play. First down, Houston. So left too early. So with the punt, the Gunners are not allowed to move downfield until the ball leaves the foot of the punter. And that's not just the gunner, that's also the interior players. No one can be more than one yard down the field when the ball is punted. Unlike the NFL, where you see gunners can go, or in college, everyone can go, XFL rules. No one can. It encourages punt returns in this league. Houston entered averaging 335 total yards per game. They've got 109. Silvers flushed. Eye still downfield. Finds a crosser that Cedric Bird. And the Seattle defense has set the tone with defense, Sam. And this is what we've been waiting for. Even talk about defense creating offense. You see Austin Fowlu and Tuzar Skipper with the sack. Then you see a pump block. If you get a turnover, at least you get a tipped punt, and that creates field position. And then last you see Antoine Brooks on the edge. He's a safety. He's 5'10", but he comes in not just for the sack, but also the sack fumble. That's the only thing Seattle's been missing all season long. Here's Sporgy out of Washington State. Brought down by Clarence Hicks, the UTSA Roadrunner. Clarence Hicks, Clarence Hicks is known for his speed. Here we go, here we go. Hey, low check swing. I want ready. Low check swing. 
Silver's quick release and elite arm strength. Showing it off there for the first down. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And it's Cedric Bird out of Hawaii again. Hey, Chris Rice. So anytime we're bringing up these receivers and playmakers from Houston, from Washington State, from Hawaii, those are guys that have played in either the air raid or run and shoot. So they understand the offense really well. There's not a steep learning curve no. by any means. Uh -huh. Pitch and catch to Justin Smith. Trips left, black, blast. Trips left, black, blast. I'm telling you, you start. Here we go. Black, black, don't worry. You start watching the tape on this Seattle defense. Every single one of these corners, Lyndon Stevens, Chris Payton Jones, they all can cover this blast play. We remember it. It's that outside it's pass that oh. simulates a run. Uh -huh. To Bird. Upended by Bryce Thompson. But sooner or later, they're going to use that as a setup for a, a, essentially a screen and go. Thompson, eight NFL games under his belt. Last with the New Orleans the Saints. Completed pass. Completed, completed pass. pass? Yes. Okay. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 56. 15 yard penalty. Third down. And that's against D. Parker out of Mississippi State. Yeah, it's obviously a late hit that's very illegal, but you got to add Bryce Thompson to that list of corners who can cover. He plays nickel, wants to take on him. He's great in late disguise. He's fearless. He's sticky in coverage, great in coverage. That's the stuff that I see when I watch him, but also all of these DBs. That's how you can slow down He's this run and shoot offense. He's going to get screen or draw here, guys. Screen or draw. Oh. So each team has 15 headsets that can divide among offense and defense. Most of the times it's the linebackers defensively relaying the message like that from Ron Zook. Here we go. White. Excellent orange. Seattle prepared for a screen or a draw on second and 21. Go. Hot, hot. Got neither. How about a deep shot? Way overthrown to Justin Smith. Fine. Run again. Give go. me this. Give me trips go get right. Go get trips him, right. Go get him. Go get him. Over four. Trips right. Over four. Now let's go four trips left. Over four man. Trips left. Over four man. We gotta have a rush. We gotta have a rush. Over four man. It's unbelievable, Ron Zook. He's so confident in his receiver, in his DBs, to be able to call either cover four or man to man. Essentially, the outside guys are going to be man to man because he knows they can cover. He knows it's going to be a deep pass. It's third and twenty. Longest third down for Houston tonight. Silver's hit, got it off, but broken up. Fantastic play by Zafir Kelly from South Carolina State. Week five in the XFL continues Saturday night with an FX doubleheader. The 4-0 defenders take on the 3-1 Battlehawks and the Guardians and Vipers looking for their first win. Sunday night on ESPN2 and ESPN Deportes, the Renegades squaring off against the Brahmas at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Every game also available on ESPN+. Plus. Houston and D.C., the two undefeated teams. But right now, the Roughnecks are on the ropes. 9.08 left in the third quarter, down by 15. Houston offense has been rolling through the first four games here into week number five. But I don't want to say the wheels are off, but it's not going well. Deep shot. Danucci, jump ball. Damian Willis and Ajene Harris were battling. Houston offensively, 30 0.5 points per game. Shutout tonight. 333.5. 126 total yards tonight. 
passing yards and rushing yards. Top three in all of those. It's just not clicking tonight, Sam. And part of it is this, the familiarity. You have the personnel who were able to cover Houston's receivers. We have familiarity. You see these same calls in practice, even when you're going good on good. The live total is 31 and a half. Nearly picked off, was it? No. Danucci was looking for Jacor Pearson, and William Likely, the playmaker, was there and almost grabbed it. Well, it's the reason you say the playmaker. Remember, last week against Orlando, he recovered that fumble for 49 yards for a touchdown, and Will Likely, he knows he can undercut this route. And so that's the Three, one eight, thing you're waiting for. Two, you're saying, man, I know that Danucci may eight, give me the ball. This team turns it over. I have to take advantage of those opportunities. And it's typically on underthrows like that. Likely another Maryland Terrapin. Danucci, this is what Wade Phillips was talking about. Elusive with the legs, oh, stood up, takes his shot, and eventually brought down by C.J. Brewer. The man was looking for contact. And part of the reason you say, man, we weren't expecting, you weren't expecting this run game. Well, it's not even that you weren't expecting it. You're coming off of a short week. Remember, these teams, we had Seattle on Saturday, and then you're back, you get home, you're from a long flight. You have two days of walkthrough and then you have to get back in. And so that's part of the difference and why you may not be seeing these teams as prepared as you would have liked. No, Short no, weeks no. don't have as much time. Nizalik on the punt. Georgia Bulldog, the former Atlanta Falcon, gets it off. Here's Travella Harris. Harris thumped from behind. Return of five. The hit made by Zafir Kelly. Here you go, Brian. Think about, I think about the mentality of teams often. A team like Houston. They've been the the hunted. Blue. X-Wing, X-Tex, someone, right? Seattle's saying, hey, no, we're going to hunt you. We're going to show you that we're actually oh. the best team in the league. So they're coming in, it seems as if, with a more of a chip on their shoulder. Go. Uh -huh. Silver to Aline off the mark. It's just not clicking. And keep in mind, this is a Seattle team. They open up the season against D.C. They had the go-ahead score set up, ran an option play. Danucci was hit and fumbled. Week number two, we had them against St. Louis. It was back and forth. St. Louis kicked the walk-off field goal. So they've been battle-tested. Those two losses are close. Really, the last play of the game is when they lost both of those games. So they think they should have won. They're just as confident as anyone. Very close to being 4-0 like Houston. One-on-one -on -one defense, Chris Payton-Jones. A lot of grabbing there with Deontay Burnett. The fuck are you looking at? But the Nebraska Cornhusker wins that one-on-one. -on -one. He's the top cover corner for Seattle. He told Ron Zook, no one's throwing my way. <laughs> the coaches were like, yeah, I wouldn't either. Well, coach said, hey, he came to him. Payton said, nobody's throwing to me. Coach said, I wouldn't either. That was on full display right there. Go. Oh. Silvers on third down, broken up at the last moment by Kelly. Zafir Kelly is having himself a ball game, representing South Carolina State well. So it's not just Zafir Kelly. I mean, this is great. Uh, you, you, you're allowed to undercut routes, especially when you know you have a safety over top of you. So that's great on that. But going back to all of these defensive backs, every time you put it on tape, you say, man, this team brings five people often, and so they play a lot of man. So all these guys communicate extremely, extremely well. Elijah Holder has already blocked one. Number 33 in orange. Big punch! Here's another! Seattle has done it again! So that was blocked by two czar skipper. It was, what's so great about this play, it was, it was just mano we mano. I'm going to run you over. Two czar skipper, number 51. 
He just bull rushes the, the left guard on the on pump protection. And he gets so far back, he knows where the pump block point is. Even if you're not taking the ball away, you're creating field position by doing a blocked punt like this one or a tip punt like we saw before. Great field position after that skipper block. And check this out. That's Morgan Ellison checking in for the first time tonight. So the leading rusher in the XFL is back. We've seen him the last two weeks. He got injured and banged up last week and came back in. The week before, he got banged up again. And so you wonder if the short week is allowing him to get a little bit more rest. But hey, let's pound this ball in. He's 6'2", 235. Flip 51. Hey, easy. Flip 50. Flip 50. Flip 50. Flip 50. You have to be alert for Danucci's legs every time you're in the Check red zone. Out. Defensive linemen have to keep that pocket tight. Uh, uh. Danucci felt the pressure. Dealt with the pressure. Flag down. Danucci will man the beat. Held up at the two-yard line. Flag down. Flag down. Holding offense number 73. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat. Second down. That's on the center, Jared Thomas. So you see the holding by Jared Thomas, yes. But pay attention to Tim Ward getting up the field. You can't do that in the red zone. Why? Because the field is more longer. It's like, you know, it's, it's more horizontal when you're down there. It's not more downfield passes. It's more quarterback ability to step up and then go sideways. That hurts defenses when you go upfield. And so Tim Ward has to communicate. They didn't let him know. Don't go upfield in the red zone. You're not going to get a sack. Set, go. Josh Gordon, been quiet. He's at the bottom of your screen. Danucci looking that way initially. Fires to Gordon. It's picked off. Ajane Harris with the interception. And Harris and Sean Davis with interceptions tonight. Easy, easy. Great, 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 great. Went to USC where he was a standout. Continuing that here in the XFL. Silvers laces it over the middle. He had him. Cedric Bird was there. Let's check in with Eric. Guys, coming off the sideline, we saw Jacor Pearson coming off wide open, visibly frustrated as he came off the field, screaming, doesn't know what's going on, slams his helmet you know, on the ground there, visibly upset. Understandably so, Lully is so wide open. Eric, what happens with Danucci in situations like that? Why is a turnover such a problem? Yeah, man, I think that he just gets so confident within the game that, man, he forgets there's other people out there sometimes. Throwaways are better than picks, and it just got away from him right there. There's the frustration from Jacor Pearson, part of it. In this league, cameras and microphones always on you. It's going to make you a star, but you got to be able to handle it when times aren't going well. Third and manageable for the Roughnecks. Go. Hard, hard. Silvers to throw. Pressure. Drops him. Ball is out. And we've got a fumble. Tuzar Skipper comes up with it, forcing it out. Got an empty hand. We've got an empty hand, clearly empty hand. Houston recovered. Great look on the cart. Houston recovered. That's correct. That's correct. Fourth down. Fourth down. Yeah, we're clear. Empty hand. We're good. First down. So gives Skipper the forced fumble. Houston does recover, but it backs him up. Sets up a fourth and 15. Race Porter punts it away. And Calvin McKnight spinning shy of the 30-yard line. ESPN Tournament Challenge women's brackets are open. So scan the QR code and download the app and start making your picks. Create a group, invite your friends, and get ready for the madness with a number one bracket game. Or join the WNBA group to compete against your favorite players. The women's game closes tomorrow morning at 11.30 Eastern. One seats going into the tournament. South Carolina, Virginia Tech, Stanford, and Indiana. Ben DiNucci back at it 
after his second interception in the end zone. Set, go! Hot! Hot! To Ellison. A wild child, Morgan Ellison, not much there on first down. Sam got to get into this, though. Danucci is trying to get back to the NFL. Jim Haslett has talked to him about turnovers and says he knows what's expected. Nine turnovers in five games ain't going to get it done. And we've seen six interceptions. We've seen three lost fumbles. Those hurt teams that you still have the lead. You still have a chance to keep the lead. We're seeing a little bit more run plays because we know, as we know, the clock runs in the Hunt. XFL. Hunt. Danucci in rhythm and complete. Scott. Charlie Temapeo, the tight end. Only his third catch of the season. Check that. That's Jordan Vesey out of Cal. Here we go. Let's go first down, first down, first down. Tampa on first down, ready, let's go. Monday, 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 here we go. Set, go! Ellison with the first down carry. So Houston is trying to stay undefeated. They still have a nice cushion over the Renegades, or two and two out of Arlington in the north becomes really interesting if Seattle can win this game and D.C. beats St. Louis. St. Louis would have two losses, and that would be a two-way tie for second place. If the Sea Dragons don't get this win, I know it's just five weeks in, but the 10-week schedule becomes that much more difficult to move into the top two and put yourself in a playoff spot. This one really matters. Danucci, again, the strike to Damian Willis. Willis now with five catches tonight. Do they look like a team that's going to be a factor? Oh, they absolutely do. And they look like that team even from the beginning of the season. It was just those, those, those missed opportunities, whether it's penalties or by turnover. But this team is confident. Really, the only phase of the game for Seattle that has not been perfect is offensively, as Ellison wants bodies on the third down carry. He gets the first down yardage. That's what we're talking about, man. He's raw, but he is physical and wants it. First time Houston trails entering the fourth quarter this season. Mention the multiple phases, though. Let's keep in mind special teams has blocked two punts. The first team with multiple pump blocks this year. Offense, defense, special teams. Have your defense lead to offense. Have your special teams lead to points. That's how you win in any league. Danucci fortunately holds on to the football because Tim Ward gets the sack and it was close to a strip sack. Here's T Mac. Here with Brandon Silvers. I'm assuming you were talking to AJ Smith on your headset. What was he telling you? We just got to put a drive together. You know, we're moving the ball and then we get penalties or something happens. So, you know, we're just not playing very good offensive football right now. We just got to get a drive together. And we're down two scores and, you know, we'll see. Down 15, how do you come back here? Yeah, put a drive together. You know, completions, catch the ball and get north to south. Let's protect up front, and, you know, we got to put the ball in the end zone. Appreciate your time. Lowell? Allison with a carry. Allison with a stiff arm, but brought down. That was William Likely with the stop. Now, part of this is the time winding down. It's going to wind down quicker than maybe you're used to seeing on. Trips on different left. levels. AD, X and Z9, divide special. Here we go. 80 on the clock will 80. keep running after it's reset, after let's incompletions go. and out of bound plays until the final two minutes. June Jones Take likes go. to run plays. He's also a smart man. Hot. Hot. He's taking this clock all the way down. Danucci pressured, won't get out of this one, brought down. By Chauncey Rivers. Chauncey Rivers, he, so remember, this is a new left tackle in the game. And so we saw Liam Jimmins go down, and so new left tackle in. Chauncey Rivers understands that. He beats him with speed. 
He bends around the edge, and he's able to bring down Ben DiNucci. So, guys, what you're seeing right there, too, is, as Acho, you just mentioned, you got a new left tackle. That guy plays right guard. It, it is extremely difficult to go from guard to left tackle, the most difficult position on the offensive line. And he's just being overwhelmed by this pass rush. Two plays in a row there. Eric, should that and does that affect play calling? Well, you want to get the ball out quicker when you have those werewolves on the other side for Houston, as, as we all know, and you have a guard playing tackle. Man, you've got to help them. Either roll away, chip with a tight end, chip with a running back, or just get the ball out quick. Well, week five in the XFL will continue Saturday night with an FX doubleheader. The 4-0 defenders take on the 3-1 Battle Hawks, then the Guardians and Vipers looking for their first win. It's Sunday night on ESPN2 and ESPN Deportes. The Renegades scoring off against the Brahmas at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Every game also available on ESPN+. Plus. There's a Will Wolf you were talking about. The Wolf <laughs> is out here in Seattle. 12-13 right. left for Brandon Silvers. Off the back foot, nobody home. One of the best things about this point in the game, at least for a defender, you talk about the new offensive tackle, but even on the other side is Seattle has been in this position before. Last week, they were up late in the game, and so those rushers got a chance to get after the quarterback. You start believing in yourself more. Once you, they had a couple sacks in that game, especially late in the game, fourth quarter. This is what you live for. You play for times like this. Here we go. Go. Ali with the carry. Shifty, undersized, doesn't matter. It's going to be close to the first down marker. And they say move the chains. Big carry there by Bryson Ali. Wade Phillips trying to keep this Houston Blue. franchise Blue. undefeated. And we're 5-0 in 2020 before COVID shut the league down. Here you're, we go. you're the F wheel. So Bryson Ali out of the backfield. Be watching go. him for the pass going to him on a wheel route. Silvers will go the other way, bat it down at the line by Emmanuel Smith, the Fandy Commodore. Swing. All right, hey, give me spread right, spread right Detroit, outside release. Spread right Detroit, outside hey, release. Spread right Detroit, Owen, ready? You can now see the stress. What's that coming out there? Go. Stress growing right. for A.J. Smith as Ron Zook's defense is in control. Wide open running lanes for Aline. Third and three for Houston, down 15 nothing. Move stemming to the right. Stemming to the right. Talk about teams and facing adversity. Yeah. Houston had a huge blue win blue. last week. Hey, blue. F off and I want it. A.J. Smith is yeah. Justin, I want you in the to hot come seat. in a little bit. Find your completion. Go. Hot, hot. Silvers has been harassed all night. It was tipped again. The guys in orange coming up with another stop. Daniel Joseph. This could be four down territory. No, it will not be. That's the third pass knocked down by a defensive lineman that we've seen. One thing you know if you're D-line, if you can't get there, Get your hands up. Those lead to incompletions. Daniel Joseph out of North Carolina State got a big mid on it. Former fourth overall pick in the CFL draft. He's originally from Toronto. High Archer. Big Knight from the 15. And Seattle will start shy of the 20. Let's listen in. How do you do it? I, I work out like every morning at four. Good man. Oh, God. Divide special yet? Yeah, that's what I call it. Oh, yeah, 80Z9 divide special. Yeah. 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 Hey! Monday. A rushing touchdown and a here passing go, touchdown go. by Ben DiNucci and a three-point conversion getting us to 15 points for Seattle. Oh, the ball came out. He was down. Houston thinks they have it. 
We heard Danucci said he was down. He might have been down. But Morgan Ellison it. coughed it up. Uh, we got him up, and we're going to look at it. It's right there. I've got the high end zone. I've got clearly a fumble on the high end. It's a ruling zone. on the field. Dean, you want to look at this? Or you, uh, yeah, I'm looking at it. You have recovery by the defense, right? Fumble recovered by the defense? Yes, recovered by the defense. Yep. I've got a great look here. It is a fumble. The and the recovery is good. We're clean. Very good call. That is are we going to go? The okay, 12th turnover clear, on the season by Seattle. They lead the XFL by far. This game should be a blowout. But Danucci has thrown two interceptions in the end zone. And the leading rusher in the XFL, Morgan Ellison, just lost that fumble. They now have a minus 10 turnover margin which is, as you mentioned, last, eighth in the XFL. 15 points. Go! The deficit oh, for yeah. Houston. First play in Seattle territory in the second half. Silver is over the middle, out of the hands of Burnett. He had it and dropped it. That was a great route by, by Deontay Burnett. He kind of was like a shake route, and then he stopped, and he started, but Trey Walker in the middle. He may have heard footsteps. That's what sometimes you say as a defender. You see John Trey Kirkland on the sideline. Kirkland left the game off one of the first plays. Ruled out for the Go. remainder of the game. That's the leading touchdown maker in the NX XFL. Borgie, open field stop. Made by Mikel Wright. The live line hard, hard, from Caesar hard, Sportsbook. Hard. Seattle by 10 and a half. Okay, the total, 22 and a half. H option, red check, red check, red check, red check. Go. Hard, hard. Silver's in zone. He was wide open. Does he make the catch? No. Justin Smith was there, but the ball got there late. We do have a flag. Let's listen. In the end zone, 32. Ball 32 deep in the end zone. So he's got early Pass interference, defense, number 32. Foul occurred in the end zone. Ball he placed the one yard with an automatic first down. Yep, this shot, I'm looking at the far hand right here. He's into it. Wind it, it up balls. whenever you're ready. Far hand held's a good look. That's, that's our best shot right there. He plays it. Denver, punch. Owen, ready? That's a play that Seattle absolutely could challenge if they wanted to, but they unsuccessfully used Go. the challenge earlier in the game. Hunt, hunt. First and goal. Borgie with a carry. Still moving. No signal yet. Roughnecks want the touchdown. Down inside the one. I can't find the ball, though. Far hand. Here, up, right there. This is typically where we see Cole McDonald at quarterback. Houston staying with Silvers. Borgie looking for the second effort. He's tackled into the end zone. It took a while, but Houston is on the board. Max Borgie had 41 total touchdowns at Washington State. He has a nose for the end zone. But now they got to find a way to get these points. One, two, or three. The one from the two-yard line, the two from the five, the three-pointer for the ten. Here we go. All right, let's go. Houston will go for the two-pointer, where they are four of 11 on the season. Go! Corner. Off the hands of Travell Harris. It is a nine-point Seattle lead. That is still a one-score game for Houston. They will need a touchdown and a three-point conversion. 
Seattle with not much going with TJ Hammonds. So this has been a dramatic night for the Lions. The Roughnecks favored by five going into the game. They've been favored in every game and have covered in every game this season. After the first Seattle touchdown, it was Seattle by a point and a half. After the second touchdown, Seattle by nine and a half. Going into the start of the fourth, Sea Dragons by 13 and a half. The current line is Seattle by eight and a half. 91 on two, ready. So there was a false start. Sea dig. That added some yards Check for down. Seattle. They got 716 to try to ice away. Danucci over the middle. That's Josh Gordon. Gordon makes only his second catch tonight. First positive yards for him. It's a former All-Pro. Trips right, Bucks. Trips right, Bucks. G4, G4, G4. 19's in the game. Set go. Hot, hot. TJ Hammonds with the carry. The Razorback thumped. Oh, launched backwards by Tavante Beckett out of Marshall. You see Seattle going to the run game, trying to protect that ball. And a new running back, it's not Ellison. Now it's TJ Hammonds in there. 581 Nebraska, Z Dig. Trips right, 581 Nebraska, Z Dig. And the clock is still running, still Zorro running. Zorro spoke. Zorro spoke. A win here for Seattle on this drive is simply not turning over the football. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Danucci thought about running, it's high. That's a forward pass, so incomplete looking for Hammonds. It's gonna set up a third and 10. How in the world is Seattle two and two in position to be three and two with the minus Trips 10 right. turnover differential? That's right, 81 X9 divide special. Here we go, 81, 81 on two, ready. Well, it's because their offense 81, is still 81, so explosive. 81. And so you, if you don't want to turn the ball over, but you can score at such a high rate, so it, it almost, it almost go, we we erases go. those Set turnovers. Hot, hot. Danucci taking a go. shot. It's too far and it picked. Harris is now your XFL leader in interceptions. His second of the night. How is that possible? Come on, man. Is Danucci calling for Josh Gordon to be removed from the game? Sam, did I hear that right? I don't know what I heard, Law. All I know is what I saw on the tape. You see another interception, and you might say, okay, man, that's on Gordon, or maybe it's on you reading the us reading the coverages differently. But now we have Houston back in the game, essentially a hand-wrapped gift delivered for Brandon Silver. Go! Oh. Two picks in the uh -huh. end zone. That was his third tonight. Silvers throws it away. Sam, they're now minus 11 in turnover margin. And that exchange, that was Danucci expressing frustration with Josh Gordon. It was, it was, and now it's also a one-score game. We've heard some of this frustration before, but we need to see what's gonna happen, how this game ends. Sometimes winning cures all, losing doesn't. Go. Oh, it hurt. Ali. It's four yards. Now you can go back to the second interception in the end zone. He was looking for Gordon. It was picked because that ball was thrown behind Gordon. So it's not like Danucci's been perfect. Right, right. Hey, blue. That's blue. X of F. Huge third and six for Brandon Silvers, an undefeated Houston. Go. All right, hut. Check down the lean. Can still get up and run. Hit hard to complete the play. It's Emmanuel Smith. 
Now, see, NFL rules, you have to be down by contact. So it's great awareness by Aline getting up, trying to get the extra yards. Fourth and hurry, four. Hurry, Roughnecks hurry, going for it with under four minutes left. Hot, hot. Seattle scrambled. There could have been movement, too, on the Houston left side of the offensive line. Oh, no, no, no. Hold up. Prior to the foul, timeout. Seattle was called. It's the first charge timeout of the half. Wow. Seattle was in scramble mode trying to get the right personnel on the field. Well, they knew if you have that five, if you have 12 men on the field or if you're offside, that's an automatic first down because it's fourth and four. And so great play, great decision by Seattle's coaches calling a timeout. Let's listen in to Wade Phillips. We got to go for it. Hurry, hurry, snap it, snap it, snap it, snap it, snap it, snap it. Snap it. Snap it. And it looked like it was going to be a false start on James Moore. Let's see how this play is being set up. All right, hey, hey, hey. Run it. Remember Blend call here, Blend. Try to find grass and roll. Go! All right, hut! Fourth and four. Could be the ball game. Silvers, there's a flag down. Heaves it over the middle, incomplete. Let's wait for the call. Down. Holding offense, number 73. The penalty is declined. The result of play is a first down for Seattle. The Seattle defense comes through again, Sam. That was Elijah Ponder on the outside. He had a sack last week. You notice his get off and notice his hands. He waits, he waits, and he does it's almost like a side swipe and keeps that bend. That's where the holding call was called. This guy has great hands. Sack at a critical moment last week in the fourth quarter. Points makes this one a lot more interesting. Tackles right, strong left, Miami on two, ready. Points will make it a two-score game. But remember, the special fourth and 15 make it, keep it rule, that if a team that is trailing scores, they can elect for the fourth and 15 instead of an onside kick. So Houston still has a shot, but they need a stop. A go. touchdown two, and, and three-point conversion Monday. difference. Monday, Monday. Here we go, here we go. Set, go! <laughs> Seattle keeping it on the ground to Hammonds. This is only a game because of turnovers. Four of them tonight for Seattle. Trips left. Trips left, 80, C, N, D, H levels. Here we go, 80, 80, on two, ready. So That's still give Bendinucci options. He'll have levels, levels routes, run at 5, 10, 15. Here we go. A chance to make his own decision depending on the Check coverage. Out. Tread lightly Hot. here on third and four. Danucci outside to Vizi. Vizi made the catch. The Cal Golden Bear. That's going to take us down to the two-minute warning. Coming up on the final, Houston with three timeouts left, down by nine. Seattle will keep it on the ground. They've thrown three interceptions. They've lost one fumble. After our game at Sports Center from Los Angeles with Stan and Ashley, it's not officially March until it's the NCAA tournament, and we've already got upsets. Plus, the women's round of 64 is set as the first four wraps up. And Sabrina and Escu join Sports Center to discuss new kicks and new teammates. Sports Center from Los Angeles.
next. We've had all the drama in this game, Sam. It looked like it was going to be a Seattle blowout. Seattle, even though they've been turning the ball over, their, their defense has really kept them in the game. And so it'll be interesting to see how this last series in unfolds. Even if Seattle scores right now, if Houston scores, you know they can do that, make it, keep it. They can go for a fourth and 15 and then keep the ball. So even if this becomes an 18-point game with 90 seconds left, it's not over because you can get a touchdown, three-point conversion, get that fourth and 15, and another nine-point play, and send it to Hot. overtime. Hot. Second and nine, playing it safe. The spin move, Hammonds to the five, and brought down at the four. They caught him out of bounds. Oh, that looks like they didn't, so the clock is rolling. Remember, inside of two minutes, the clock okay. will stop. Let's go opposite left, opposite left, Tampa. Opposite left, Tampa. Hey, Tampa, Monday. Hey, Tampa, 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 Monday, Tampa. Monday, 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 Tampa, Monday. Here we go, let's go, let's go. Tanucci wants a timeout for Seattle. We build this as the battle between A.J. Smith, the Houston offensive coordinator, and June Jones, his counterpart with Seattle. They've got a deep friendship. Goes back to when Danucci first started learning from June Jones at SMU, when Hal Mummy was there as well. And that expression says it all for A.J. Smith. First matchup against his mentor, it's not going as planned. And they talk every single day. They talk about football, they talk about life, they talk about what happened in the game before. But you see A.J. Smith saying, man, what is going on? How did this happen? Though the game is not over, he has to stay locked in. But yet he's facing another one of his mentors. A.J. Smith, like his mentor, smart, creative, passionate, approachable. I'd say the least paranoid coordinator I think I've ever been around in the game. Yeah. Go. Darius Bradwell is the running back. Hot. Hot. Bradwell flag down, finds the end zone. Flag down, flag down. I got DOF, number 45 defense. He's also the play as a touchdown. Offside defense, number 45. The penalty is declined. The result of the play as a touchdown. Seattle with a little security. Red zone has been problematic with two interceptions in the end zone. But Bradwell, out of Tulane, got the start tonight. It makes this a 15-point game. Okay, let's go. Uh, trips right up, 860 Kansas, F and X post. So you got... You can hit four or 15 or just touch one up to the corner. Jones saying that Juwan Green or Damian Willis will be open. Set go! Hot! Hot! Right side. We gotta get in. Thrown short. So what does this mean? In the XFL standings, Sea Dragons, the preseason favorites to win it all, could end the weekend tied for second in the North if DC beats St. Louis. Tough task. In the South, it gets really interesting, especially with the Renegades and Brahmas, who will play each other in back-to-back -back weeks. Top two in each division make the playoffs. After this week, we'll be halfway through the season. So get a little more definition for that playoff picture. And teams are watching this game saying, man, how do we take notes on how to beat Houston? Arlington is saying, man, we get back-to-back -back wins. Now we're four and two. San Antonio is saying, we have a chance to beat Arlington back-to-back. -back. Now we're back in the mix. All these teams have been waiting for Houston to get knocked off, not only for the standings, but also to understand the system of how to beat the team that was undefeated. And this game is far from over because of the XFL rules that are built to promote comebacks. 
kick is away. Don't want to kick it out of bounds and risk the ball being placed at the 45. Dejon Lee takes it. Oh, goodness. Big hit at the 25 by Trey Walker. So Silvers and company, they have to move quick enough with two timeouts. They've got to find a score and then go for the fourth and 15, make it, keep it. But you see the offense has been shut down tonight. Red, red, red. red. The only score courtesy Go. of a Seattle uh -huh. fumble, leaving Houston with great field position. Silvers, that is complete to Travell Harris. He's playing without his top receiving threat, John K. Kirkland out of LSU, who left the game after an early injury. Red, red, red. out. I believe we have some confusion with the clock here in the timeout situation. So one thing we will see is when you get a first down, you'll see that clock stop after a first down. 11 on the clock. That's when he called the timeout. It's a good job resetting the clock. Second timeout for Houston. Playing second down. So both teams now have the timeout. I mean, I'm out. So both teams down to one timeout. The clock is reset to 111. So Wade Phillips was calling for that timeout. Got it. He was, and he knows he's going to go back to the college rule. So you need to get first downs. What happens is you get a first down within the last two minutes of the first half or second half. In this case, then the clock will stop until those chains are reset. And so think college. You have a lot more time in these last two minutes. Houston needs to get first downs or get out of bounds. Strips right up. Red. Five are going. Ready? I'm back. They do need to score quick. You do need to leave time okay, for that fourth go. and 15. Go. Uh -huh. But the Seattle defense has been relentless. Silvers, and that hit the backside of Zafir Kelly. Man. Special prop. Yeah, Falcon. Blue divide special prop. Hey, blue, blue, I want right. Trips right up. Quarter four man. If we can get a clean first down, take it. Go. If you took the over, uh -huh. you're cooked. It's at 43. We got 27 combined points. Staying up and trying to get out of bounds is Harris. Harris has to find the sideline there. He has to find a sideline, but there is a flag on the play. Personal foul, face mask, defense number nine. 15 yard penalties added to the end of the play. First down. That is a big penalty on Clarence Hicks. Here's the other issue you run into if you're Houston. If you burn your last time out, you lose the ability to challenge. So that's another reason why you get out of bounds. Yep, no, no foul. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you the, the, the dead ball spot. Right on the 40. Yep, put it back on the 40. First down on the 40. No mask. After review, there is no foul for a face mask. The penalty will not be enforced. However, the result of the play is a first down. So let's bring in Dean Blandino, VP of officiating. What did Wind you see up. there compared to the initial call, Dean? Yeah. So right. remember. In the last five minutes of the fourth quarter, if it involves player safety and a face mask foul would, we can get involved from the command center. We had a really good ready, look. Ready, it was actually go. the shoulder pad, not the mask that was grabbed. Beautiful. Thank you, Dean. Silvers over the middle. Bird cannot make the catch. Receivers are not helping Silvers tonight. That's Lyndon Stevens again, number one. That's actually Bryce Thompson again, number one on the coverage. He's been all over the field. Hey, red check, Owen, ready? 
Hey, Frisco, Frisco. All the two teams in the XFL averaging more ready, than ready, 300 go. yards per game. And a flag and a false start. 73, the clock was stopped. Clock, yeah, clock was stopped, so we're good. False start, offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty, remains second down. This was the play that Dean Blandino reviewed in the final five minutes. Player safety was able to overturn this. Initially called a face mask. Sam, you can see from that look, clearly it was not. He's looking at all the plays, but in the last five minutes, he is allowed to make a change to a play, and so that did not have to be challenged. Go! Oh. Uh -huh. Houston down by 15. Sideline throw, heads up to get out of bounds by Travell Harris out of Washington State. All right, here we go, 48 seconds. Okay, line up and spread right purple, spread right purple, line it up, line it up, spread right purple, spread right purple. Get up on him, over four men. Go! All right, hunt, hunt! Silver's flag down, sideline catch made by Deontay Burnett. Ruling on the field is a catch. We have a flag down. Ruling on, I got your spot. We have a defense offside. I lost the number, but that's going to be declined. Offside, defense. Penalty is declined. Result of play is a first down. But one thing you have to keep in mind, especially in the fourth quarter when it's passing situation, Hard counts, hard counts, hard counts. We saw Seattle jump off sides last week in this situation. Ready, ready, go! Silvers, in zone, has a man, overthrows Harris. Those are throws that Silvers was okay, making here we go. in the first four games. Give me a uh, spread right, Y hook, red Y hook, H street, Y hook, spread right, H street, Red Wahoo. Red, ready. 38 seconds. 38 seconds. They got to get the ball into the end zone and go for that. Get those three points and go for go. that. Make it, take it. That's why I hear some of these uh -huh. streak calls down the field. Silver's off the back foot. Let and another flag. All right, Nick Collins. Holding offense, number 64. 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. That's the top offensive lineman for Houston, Jack Snyder. And it's been indicative of the Houston problems tonight. Scoot in a little bit, Justin Smith. All right, there's Perp. Run like hell, Nick Colley. Remember to read Nick Colley on that safety backside. Get a real nice Go. clean inside release, Justin. All right, hunt. Smith talking to his quarterback all the way up to the snap. Over the middle, complete to Justin Smith. Justin Smith wheels. Houston is still alive. Wait, why not quick? Let's go. There we go. You're talking to Nick Holly saying, get upfield. Nick Holly gets upfield. He eats up that safety, and all of a sudden, Smith comes underneath. The communication we're hearing right now is Man, pristine. Sub in there. Sub. We should be in foul. It's okay. It's okay. You got to get down here. Cole McDonald checks in the quarterback. And we've got an official timeout as Daniel Joseph is down for Seattle. So let's set this up. It's now a nine point game. It looks like Houston is going to go for two, which would make it a seven point game. Regardless, they'll have a shot with a fourth and 15, make it, keep it, to keep a drive going. So these are the rules. The teams can keep the ball after scoring by an Onside kick or electing 
if they are tied or trailing in the fourth quarter to go for the fourth and 15 from their own 25 yard line. Clock runs and the drive will continue if you convert. It's played just like a regular football play. And so after this two point conversion, whether you make it or not, they can elect to do an onside or you do a fourth and 15 from the 25. And then if you get a first down, you keep on playing. The clock runs for interception. It's an interception. It's a regular football play. And in week number one, in a game that was played a lot like this, St. Louis converted and was able to score off of it to beat San Antonio in a game that, much like Houston, they were getting dominated before the final moment. They were getting dominated for three and a half quarters. St. Louis had nothing going offensively. Then they came back in the last 90 right, seconds and won the game. It. Get good outside on the two side. Get good wide splits. That good. That looks good. So Cole McDonald was usually a yeah, running threat. Read it. Read those two guys. He's that quarterback. McDonald will throw. Great it hands by Burnett 15. out of USC. Brandon, go. Brandon, go. Fourth and 15. Okay. And immediately, Houston calls for the fourth and 15. This is a great call, not only having Cole McDonald in there, but deciding to pass the ball. He can pass it as well, though he does have the running threat. Now you're down by seven, 24 seconds left, fourth and 15 from your own 25. And so you have to be thinking, once we get this, not if we get this, if you're A.J. Smith, once we get field, this, field. here's our next two or three plays. Don't show it, don't show it, but we're going Patriot. Brandon, find your one-on-one -on -one and give me trips left up, trips left up, red five verticals. Now I'll tell you this. With Patriot. No, Justin Smith, go in. Don't show what we're doing. Now let them line up because I may I check quarter. to a cutter I want again. Out there. I may quarter. check Is to a cutter. One? But it's X and Z grab. Yeah, X and Z you got to get wet. It's like two up routes on the outside unless you get yeah, unless you top, get right. cover two run goes. Hey, blue, blue, I want, ready? I want. Here it is, fourth and 15. Houston needs to convert to keep the drive going. The clock no. will run on the snap. Uh -huh. Silvers has to get to the sticks. And there it is, converted to Burnett. So drive continues, 19 seconds, and a timeout left for undefeated Houston. You heard him say, find your one-on-one, -on -one. get the verticals. You have to know defensively, it's fourth and 15. You don't need to defend the end line, defend the 15-yard mark. Deontay Burnett comes back, it's a vertical, he's off. Perfectly placed ball by Silvers. Go. Uh -huh. 19 seconds left. Silvers letting it go. Two defenders are there, incomplete, but a flag! Flag down, flag down. I got defensive pass interference. Wow! We're gonna go for two. I don't have the number. It's number one. Number, number one. one. No, number one. Number one. I don't. I don't have my flag in a good spot either. We'll help. We'll That's help you with the spot. Defense number one. The ball will be placed in the spot of the foul and includes an automatic first down. 27, call it to 27. 27. You heard Wade Phillips say, yeah, yeah. even if they score, he said, we're, we're going for two. They want to score and they want to win this game. 13 seconds left, one oh. timeout. Oh, and at that point, the total becomes a factor here. Silvers. No, ball is out, and it's picked up by Lalos. Lalos ends it. He did it before he could do it again. In his first start in the NFL with the Giants, Nico Lalos had an interception. The second week of recovered fumble. This and dude knows how to find the football. And look at this, celebrating with the home fans. Television right. Sea Dragon fans have been awesome. They're getting their moment. XFL North 
We tried to tell you last week you should be on watch for the Seattle team. And Nico Lelos was on watch. Remember he had that batted down pass earlier. He's not rushing the quarterback. It's a three-man rush. Keep your eyes on the quarterback. And you see Elijah Ponder with the bat, with the, essentially the forced fumble, but that turned into an interception. And Lelos finds the football. There's nothing better. He's a turnover machine. Yeah. Now, this needs to be a challenge by Houston. So here's the benefit. One timeout left. You can challenge anything. 51, Find something. Hand to the face, left tackle on our left tackle. Number 51, we don't challenge. On our left tackle. Okay, hand to the face. So, so he's saying that there was hands to the face against his left tackle, correct? Okay. It's not, it's not, it's not number 51, but it, I'm looking at it. And so I've got a real, yep, yep. It's no, it's actually defense 42, correct. It's number 42 that's on, working on their left tackle. I've got a left hand, yep. I've got a left hand to the collar, shoulder pad, not to the head neck area, not hands to the face. So after review, the ruling on the field stands, no, no foul for illegal hands to the face. So after review, no know, foul yeah, for legal use of hands. Oh, no. yeah. After review, there's no foul for legal okay. use of hands to the face. There's no foul. The review says there's no foul. Oh yeah, of course. Now the important part of that is for Wade Phillips to challenge, he has to specify what part of the play he wants to challenge. He has to, he has to not only Best has to have a timeout, but say specifically, who was the player? What was the play? What are you challenging? What are you calling? What are you hoping to get called? And on a night in which Seattle turns it over four times, Jacor Pearson is right. The Sea Dragons are coming because the defense plays one of the best games we've seen all year long. They're finding their stride. Last week they beat San Antonio in this exact same fashion. A game ceiling win. They're finding their stride at the right time and other teams should definitely watch out.